Hello and welcome to a new video on cryptography for everybody. In today's video, we will have a look at another classic cipher that's really interesting, and that is the Bifit cipher. I structured this video into three different parts. In the first part, we will have a look at the background of the Bifit cipher and who invented the Bifit cipher. Then we will see how the Bifit cipher actually works. And finally, of course, we will do it in Cryptool 2. We will encrypt and decrypt using the Bifit cipher. The Bifit cipher was invented in 1895 by Félix Marie de la Stelle. And you can see here, or you can't see here, a picture of de la Stelle. Since when you search on the internet for de la Stelle, you will probably find a picture, even a photo of de la Stelle. But during my research, it turned out that the person shown on the internet when you Google for de la Stelle is not the real one. It's a different person. De La Stelle was a French amateur cryptographer, and this is also really interesting, since in that time when he invented the cipher, the Bifit cipher, mostly only military and secret service personnel worked on cryptography. De La Stelle also invented the Trifit cipher and the Foursquare cipher, and we will probably have videos about these ciphers also on this channel. The cipher was published in the journal Revue du Génie Civil, under the name Cryptographier Nouvelle. And later, he wrote his book Traite Elementaire de Cryptographie in 1901, where he also published the ciphers mentioned before. And the Bifit cipher is a cipher which combines the Polybius square with transposition and it also uses fractionation. How does the Bifit cipher actually work? First, a keyword is used to create a 25-letter Polybius square, and I have an example here. For example, we use as a key secret keyword here. So you create this Polybius square where we have the coordinates here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And here you can see why we have 25 letters. And you write the keyword into this Polybius square, beginning with the first letter, second letter, and so on. And when you find a letter that you have also already written into the Polybius square before, like the second E of secret, you just omit the letter. And you continue until you have written the complete keyword into the Polybius square, like I have done here. And then you fill the remaining part of the Polybius square with the remaining letters of your alphabet. And as you can see here, we have no letter J in our Polybius square. Since we only have 25 letters, the I and J share the same spot. And instead of using J's in our text, we use the I. In the second step, the plain text is encrypted using the square by writing the coordinates of the square below the plain text. Here's an example. Let's assume we want to encrypt hello world. So you first write your plain text here. And then you look up all the letters in the square. For instance, the H here is at coordinates 3, 5. Here's our H. So you write 3, 5. Then you have the letter E. And the letter E is at the position 1, 2 here. 1, 2 is the letter E. And you continue doing so until you have written all the coordinates below your plain text. Then the digits are written or you can say transposed and fractionated in a single row. How does this work? You first write the first row of your digits, and then you continue with the second row of digits, directly after the first row. And here you can see why we say this cipher fractionates. Because the letter H produced the 3, 5 here, and the 3, 5 are split in two parts, the 3 here, and the five, they are fractionated. And then finally, in the last step of the encryption process, the digits are, you can say, decrypted using the square. So we take our digits here, like this, three, one, as our first coordinates. We have a look in our square, three, one, and we have the letter A. Then we have four, four, which is four, four, the letter M. And we continue doing so until we have, you can say, decrypted all of our digits. In the end, 
The cipher text that we obtain has of course the same length as our plain text. But it has been at first substituted by digits. These digits then were transposed and fractionated and finally again substituted using the Polybius square. And I also marked here which letters are influenced by our first letter in the plain text. And these are actually two since, as I said, we fractionated our digits. The decryption process of the bifid cipher, of course, is the reverse process. So you do all the steps in the reversed order. Now let's have a look at the key space size of the bifid cipher. And the key space size k is 25 factorial, which is about 2 to the power of 83.68 keys. Why is it 25 factorial? Let's have a look at the Polybius square again. And in our Polybius square, we have 25 different positions where we have to put in 25 different Latin letters. So we start with the first position. We have 25 letters to choose from, then 24, then 23, then 22, and so on. And for the last position, we only have one. You have to multiply all these numbers, and this is factorial of 25. Now let's have a look at the unicity distance of the bifid cipher. And the unicity distance is the minimum length of ciphertext that you need that you can expect only one solution, only one possible plain text. When you go below this unicity distance, with very high probability, you get more than one valid solution that are not indistinguishable for an attacker. We also have a video about unicity distance on this channel. So how do we compute the unicity distance here? The unicity distance u is the entropy of the key space divided by the redundancy of the language. The entropy of the key space is the log 2 of the key space size, which in our case is 83.68. The redundancy of the English language is 3.2. When we divide these numbers, we get as a result 26.15 which means that a ciphertext should have a minimum length of 27 that we can expect a unique solution. I also have to tell you that the encryption of the cipher can be performed in two ways. First, we could encrypt the complete plain text in one go. That is what we did in the example on the previous slide. But there is also another way how you could use a cipher, and that is encryption of individual blocks of plain text. For instance, you cut your plain text into blocks of five, and then you perform the previously shown steps for encryption on each of these blocks individually. Also, instead of a 25 letter Polybius square, you could use a 36 symbol square, and this would allow you in also to encrypt the letter J, and additionally, for instance, the digits from 0 to 9. Now that we know how the bifid cipher works, let's encrypt and decrypt using the bifid cipher component of Cryptool 2. I'm here now in Cryptool 2 in the nightly build 9413.1, and I want to show you how you can use the bifid cipher. And to do so, we create a new workspace. In the new workspace, in the components section, we search for bifid cipher and drag and drop a bifid cipher component onto the workspace. Then, of course, we need some text inputs and outputs. Text input for our plain text, then a text input for the key or the keyword. Word. And we connect these to our component. Then, of course, we want to see the ciphertext. And to do so, I want to have the same sizes. So I have biggest width and biggest height. And this here will be our ciphertext. And then I also want to have a second bifid cipher that we use for decryption. We connect the same connections. And of course, this is wrong here. <laughs> we want to decrypt previously created ciphertext. So we have here the 
decrypted plain text. And now we have to set up our components. The first component should encrypt and alphabet is 25 letters. The second component should decrypt and also the alphabet is 25 letters. We want to have a secret keyword and you can even keep the spaces because your component automatically removes this. And you can also write in lowercase since it automatically changes everything to uppercase. And then we write, this is a test of the new bifit component of Cryptool 2. And since we use a 25 letter alphabet right now, we have to write two instead of the digit two. Now let's test it. We just press play. And then we can see that this component here, the bifid cipher component, encrypts using the bifid cipher. And the second component, of course, decrypts, because here we have our original plain text. Now, as I said, we can change a few things here. For instance, we can enable the period. And the period is the size of blocks in which we cut our plain text, and then we encrypt these blocks individually. And when I press play now, you can also see that the second component, of course, can't decrypt our ciphertext because we have also to enable the period. Now it should work again. This is a test of the new bifit component of Cryptool 2. And now, as I already said, we can also change the alphabet to 26 letters and digits. And just for fun, let's test it without switching the second component. And then you can see that this, of course, also doesn't work because we also have to switch the second component to alphabet 26 letters and digits. Let's press play. And then you can see we can encrypt and decrypt. Again, it works because we have the same settings, but we could also use here crypto 2 with the digit 2. And you can use all other digits from 1 to 0 or from 0 to 9 during the encryption process. Also, the ciphertext then contain the digits here. Because when we use a bifid cipher and we decrypt the digits in the intermediate step of the bifid cipher, it also, of course, uses digits from the Polybius square. Yes, and this is everything that I wanted to show you in this short video. I first showed you how the bifid cipher actually works, the key space size and unicity distance. And after that, I've shown you how you can encrypt and decrypt using the cipher in Cryptool 2. Yeah, if you did not yet subscribe to this channel, please do so. This really helps me to grow the channel and to make Cryptool 2 more popular. So thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video.